What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So we actually have some very big news that is coming out today and lawmakers are now, just now, a year or so into the pandemic, lawmakers are just now understanding the importance of monthly payments. Yes, they're understanding how important these are to the American people. That the majority of Americans, over 50% of Americans, live paycheck to paycheck. So what do they need to survive? A monthly paycheck. And when you take away the weekly unemployment boost and the monthly unemployment payments, you take away that, we don't have eviction protection anymore. The rental assistance is just so slow to get out. Lawmakers are now calling for more assistance to the American people. Well, here's what we know. There's a lot of discussions going on within Congress right now over what should and should not be in this $3.5 trillion infrastructure bill. What I can tell you is currently millions of Americans say they want to go back to work. So don't make it seem like the American people are trying to stay at home, collect unemployment benefits, collect all these you know different assistance programs from the federal government, and they're not going to try to do anything to deserve it or earn it. That's not what the American people are trying to do, but that's the way lawmakers are painting this picture of the American people. We're all just sitting at home doing nothing, but that's not the case. Here's what we know. Right now, and this is a big issue, and this is something that lawmakers have to kind of deal with, is right now, many employers are actually asking their employees or potential employees for a commitment. They want a commitment from them that in the event that the school that their child goes to were to close down for, you know, temporarily, or their classroom gets suspended because of COVID, these employers want commitments that they, that their employee has the ability to take their child to somebody else, that they can still continue to work. That's turning into a big issue. And let me ask you this because I've asked you a lot of different questions. You guys have responded almost every single time. And if you didn't know, I'm actually answering your guys' questions over on TikTok. So you can go and follow me over on TikTok at Real Adam Snyder. Go follow me there. You can also click the link down in the description box below. Go follow me and I'm answering your guys' questions there as well. So if you have any questions, you can comment here, you can comment there, and I'm gonna answer it there as well. So hopefully that's gonna help you out. But let me ask you this. If your child, if you have children, if your child, uh, their school were to get canceled, would you have a place to take them so that you could continue to work? Because let's say they are tested positive for COVID. Can you leave your child with your spouse and you, you both off and on, one goes to work, one stays home, and then vice versa, you keep switching? Could you do that? Could you work from home, right? But this is the question. Can you afford to stay home for possibly two weeks? Because that's what we're seeing. The majority of people are being asked to stay home for two weeks for being in close contact, okay? Being in close contact with somebody that tested positive for COVID. Do you have the ability to stay home for two weeks with no income? Can you survive that? Let me know down in the comment section below. And this is why right now, many lawmakers are saying we need to be able to find uh, better and more affordable childcare because there will come a time when the American people cannot take their children to a daycare center. They cannot afford to stay home and they don't have the ability to ask a friend or family member to watch their child for set amount of days. So here's what we're hearing. When it comes to childcare, it's not possible to take a child to a daycare center if they have COVID. Obviously, makes sense. It's also not possible to take a child to a daycare center just for a handful of days because number one, they probably don't have any space. The other issue is it's too expensive. It's too expensive. Let's say you have a seven-year-old who normally goes to school, public school, which is free. Are you gonna take your child to a daycare center that probably is gonna cost, let's say uh, 50 to $75 a day? Probably not. Probably not if you're only making $100 a day why would you go and just make $25 or $50 a day when you could effectively just stay home and you won't have to worry about it, right? That's what we're seeing. Now, regarding affordable childcare, here's what's coming out today. 
Reports indicate that the average American pays just over $9,000 per year per child. That's insane when many low income households only make about twelve dollars to $15,000 per year. And they're gonna pay about $9,000 on average for one child. That's insane. This is also one of the reasons why progressives are pushing to see this uh, the 7% rule put into the next infrastructure bill where you cannot pay over 7% of your monthly take home pay on childcare. That is, that's currently what they're working on. Again, do I think this is gonna pass? I think this has a good chance of passing, but we're gonna have to wait and see. Many Americans say they can't afford quality childcare because this is actually causing them to miss other payments and struggle elsewhere. Maybe on their rent, right? Is rent more important than childcare? How, how do you quantify that? How do you say, well, I'm gonna pay childcare this month, but I'm not gonna pay for rent. I'm gonna pay for rent this month, but childcare, well, I'm gonna be a little bit late there. How do you justify either one? It makes it very difficult. But right now, here's what we're hearing. Lawmakers are saying that the child tax credit payment is still being discussed. This is still being discussed, but the good news is this is something that is almost gonna be a guarantee it will be included into this $3.5 trillion infrastructure bill. They say this is something that we need, and like I said earlier, the monthly payments, this is something they are seeing as helping millions and millions of Americans. Millions of children have been lifted out of poverty not because of the increased child tax credit payment, but because of the monthly payments. That's the only reason why. This is one of the reasons why many are still calling on the $3,600 child tax credit payments for the next four years. Whether it stays four years or not, we don't know. But what we are hearing is that this will be another monthly payment. We are going to see this continue. What we are hearing is that lawmakers, mainly Democrats, are pushing for some form of this universal basic income type payment. This is a monthly payment that we will see. But here's the good news. And this is the news I absolutely loved hearing today is that most lawmakers are in agreement that the stimulus checks disbursements went out smoother than any other form of assistance. Rental assistance, this, is, this has just been a mess, right? We got, just think of the IRS and the, the tax refunds. Have you got yours yet? Yeah, it's still a mess. Stimulus checks went out much faster than that. Well, what about nutrition assistance? This went out pretty quickly, but also it didn't. It wasn't that transformative. It was a 15% boost on top of the maximum amount. So yes, it was helpful, but it wasn't life-changing. Stimulus checks were life-changing. The child tax credit payments were life-changing. PPP loans were life-changing. But again, all these were quick, send out the money, get it to the American people, let them do what they want with it, Okay, they will go and scatter around their, their community, right? And it's gonna help out the economy and all businesses, all the American people. That's what we're hearing, is that right now lawmakers are pushing and looking for different ways to provide additional assistance to the American people on a monthly basis. Monthly, okay? Lawmakers want to send out vouchers to seniors. I addressed this earlier today that there were many rumors, many reports. Well, this is looking more and more likely. Yes, seniors are going to get vouchers so that they can afford dentures, hearing aids, and glasses. They say that seniors need assistance now, and waiting around for Medicare to get their system up and running and in place is going to take far too long. This is the number one reason why vouchers are being considered. But the reports also indicate the vouchers only gonna be between $600 and $1,000. Now these vouchers are most likely gonna come in the form of a debit card so that you can access your money quicker. Here's what we know. After doing my research, and again, let me know, because obviously research, there's, it varies. But doing my research, the low cost for dentures cost around $500. If you have dentures or if you know somebody that does, how much did it cost them? Let me know down in the comment section below. A middle line of dentures cost around $1,500, and a quality, co or quality uh, set of dentures, these are sets, cost you about three to $5,000. Glasses, typically about $250. And then we got hearing aids. Well, hearing aids can go anywhere from cheap ones, about 200 bucks, all the way to three to $15,000 for one device, one device. $15,000 for one device, let's say you want two, 
for both years, that's $30,000. But yet Congress is gonna give us a $1,000 possible stimulus check, or excuse me, voucher. It, it seems a little bit, uh, I don't think it's gonna help out that much. I think it's, uh, glasses, yeah, that's gonna be great. It's gonna help out you know, millions of people get glasses, but that's also $250. It's the bigger expenses, dentures. How, how do these people chew food? How do you chew food? How do you chew a steak without teeth? How do you do that? It's, it's probably not very easy. I don't know. Again, I don't know. I'm, I'm not having experienced this. So I don't know. That's why I'm asking you guys. What should the amount be? Should it be between $600 and $1,000 per year? Or should it be higher? Lawmakers are also discussing other ways to make the tax credits payable through a monthly payment. This could include things like the earned income tax credit. This also could include things like the child care credit as well possibly giving the the you know parents money up front or monthly to pay for this this child care which they will essentially get at the end of the year anyway right it's kind of what we're hearing and if we have a portal where we can input information for our child care every single month it makes it that much easier the goal here though is to see monthly payments and the goal pretty much behind the monthly payment is to help parents afford the necessities the necessities every single month, as opposed to just giving a lump sum at the end of the year when you file taxes. Because what happens there? And again, you know, I know this from experience. When I didn't have much money, okay, one of the things I would do is I would hope at the end of the year I'd have, and this was like when I was 18, 19, 17, 18, 19 years old, I'd hope I'd get a big sum of money at the end of the year. So, you know, at the end of the year, I get $2,000. Wow, two thousand dollars, perfect. I'm gonna go get some shoes, get some new clothes. I'm gonna, you know, get some new stuff for my car. I'm not gonna make more additional payments. No, I'm gonna go and. Uh, I think at that time I had like a uh, 1999 Mitsubishi Eclipse. I went and bought, uh, you know, a new uh, air filter for it. I think I got rims or some new tires, right? All these things, which I didn't need. Okay. But if I would've got a monthly check, again, this is just an example, if I already got a monthly check for uh, earned income tax credit or I didn't have children then, but let's say I did, if I were to get a monthly check, I'd be more likely to spend it on what it's intended for, not just blow it and waste it on things I really don't need. So again, when you come into a bunch of money, which again, to me back then, $2,000 was a lot of money, I just blew through it. So this is what lawmakers are saying. We need to provide a monthly check. Many lawmakers say that a check to millions would actually mean the difference between surviving through this pandemic or not. And again, this is kind of tying into the, the survival checks, which the lawmakers are calling for again. And I told you this earlier, and I'm gonna say it again. As of right now, I don't know if we're gonna see a stimulus check. I just don't know if we will. I think there's still uh, you know, many people pushing for it, but I don't know if we're gonna get it simply because right now what we're hearing is that lawmakers are trying to pull this bill down, make it a little bit smaller. And I told you this before, according to your experts, according to many uh, White House aides, if the bill was any smaller than $3.5 trillion, the likelihood of a stimulus check also decreases. And it wasn't high to begin with. Yesterday, Here's a, here's a new update I wanna to bring to your attention because these, these things change in just 24 hours. Yesterday, Nancy Pelosi stated that the $3.5 trillion was the number. 3.5 trillion is the number, okay? That was, those were her words. The number is the number. That's what she said. She made it clear that this was not a negotiation. This was the number. However, today, she said, we will have our negotiation. She also made it clear that progressives won't be able to get everything that they want in this next bill, and there needs to be cuts to this $3.5 trillion infrastructure bill in order to get moderates on board. I said this before, who's gonna win? Is it gonna be Bernie Sanders, who's pretty much heading up this entire $3.3, $3.5 trillion infrastructure bill, or will it be uh, Senators Joe Manchin, Kirsten Sinema, and the moderates? Well. According to the reports this afternoon, the, the moderates are kind of winning. They're gonna get this bill smaller. It's gonna be smaller, which Republicans are gonna absolutely love. But 
According to multiple reports, this is not going to do much for the American people because they're still going to send the money to their, their projects and their, their personal agendas. Free community college is going to help out a lot of people. Some people are opposing it, but this is something that progressives say they need. This is something that the Biden administration wants to push through. The reports indicate that the Biden administration is going to get the majority of his, uh, his agenda, his Build Back Better agenda. That's going to be included. But as far as the scale, the size of these different provisions, that's where things are ultimately going to come you know, to a crossroad. Is do we go with what President Biden proposed or do we go with something a little bit smaller? Chances are things are going to get smaller. So what I can tell you right now is progressives are very upset that they're not going to get everything they want. They say the $3.5 trillion infrastructure bill was their negotiation. They also say that providing additional checks to the American people should be a priority. Keyword, should be a priority. But I can tell you right now, those $2,000 monthly stimulus checks, out the window. Those are gone. There's no point even to address $2,000 monthly stimulus checks. Regarding a $2,000 one-time stimulus check, chances are that's gone as well. That's not going to happen. Okay? It could, but chances are it's more likely that no, this will not happen. Could we see a possible $600 to $1,000 one-time stimulus check to those hardest hit individuals? Yes, we could. But that's not up for discussion yet because there's no proposal on that. There's no proposal yet. But as we know more there, I promise I will fill you in on that update. We also know the child tax credit payments that are being seen as a guarantee this will be included into the next bill. Some are saying that if we see this bill go from 3.5 trillion down to 1.5, which is effectively what, what uh, Senator Joe Manchin is saying, he'll support 1.5. Bernie Sanders says I support 3.5, and then they're gonna try to meet somewhere in the middle. I've said this before, chances are this bill is gonna be anywhere between two to three trillion dollars. Some experts say it's gonna be about 2.4. I don't know, I don't know where they get the number, but about $2.4 trillion, we will see. What I can tell you is if, if this is $2.4 trillion, one of the things that could be cut is the four years for the child tax credit payments. If the four years are cut, it could potentially go down to two to three years. Experts say that their two years is the minimum. They say Democrats will go for two years at the least. It's gonna be between two to four years, but we will see what happens there. So we are also seeing there's still a fight over Medicare. This is one of the reasons why is because they're trying to uh, cut off some of the, the costs. And this is one way they, they are going to try to do that. And remember last night, and I addressed this this morning, Senator Joe Manchin was pushing for between one to $1.5 trillion in infrastructure. That's kind of his, his end. Okay, he, he's starting there. This is part of his negotiation. And it's a negotiation tactic we've seen multiple times before. But right now, according to the White House, they are hopeful that they can reach an agreement with Senator Joe Manchin. One of the ways they're going to do that is President Biden is going to meet with him once he's back in Washington. So right now, it's kind of up in the air where he's at. But the good news is they are going to have a discussion to figure out where uh, Joe Manchin actually supports the bill, where he opposes it. Because as of right now, all the reports that are coming out, it's just, uh, it's pretty much Joe Manchin said this behind closed doors. Joe Manchin uh, kind of, you know, mentioned this during an interview. He, he brought up this idea or opposed this certain piece of legislation at one point but nothing's really coming out as to what is his firm stance on this bill today. That, according to reports, is what President Biden plans to get to the bottom of. So, we will see what happens there. What I can tell you though, Nancy Pelosi is now open to negotiations. She's now open to negotiations, and she said, uh, and this isn't great news for Senator Joe Manchin, she said that she is hopeful that the entire $3.5 trillion infrastructure bill will be paid for. But when she was asked, uh, will it be fully funded? She heard her quote was, well, more than half. Maybe all of the legislation would be paid for. So that isn't great news for Senator Joe Manchin either because he will only support this bill if it's fully funded. No deficit spending. This cannot happen in this bill. So we're gonna see what happens. But what I can tell you is, 
it's it's starting to kind of you know boil up and we're going to get to that we're going to get to that you know big moment which what's in the bill how much is it going to cost will the american people get anything out of it those are the big things what's in the bill will the american people get anything out of it and what is this going to cost so as soon as i know more regarding all those three things i promise i will fill you in on every single update again i just want to thank you guys for watching have a wonderful rest of your day consider subscribing go follow me over on tiktok as well and I'll see you guys on the next one.